what about the impact of China's inflation on the global market? Janet Mu is Head of Market Analysis for British wealth management firm Bruin Dolphin. Thanks ever so much for joining us on the program. So let's look, look at the, the, that recent data. So consumer prices are rising in China, but producer inflation seems to be bucking those global price pressures. Talk us through it. Hi, thanks, Juliet, for having me. Yes, um, China's producer prices are slowing down primarily because of the global commodity price market. So we have seen a slowdown in prices in terms of crude oil, in terms of a lot of agricultural products, and especially for industrial metals uh, like copper and iron ore. And as you mentioned already, uh, the property market has been weakening in China, and that's why the demand for these industrial metals, which are very heavily used in the property construction sector, they're, they're suffering. And that's why we see that the producer prices have been slowing down. And the implication for the global economy is that you know, China is a, a large exporter, is the biggest commodity exporter, and so that would have a positive, you know, this inflationary impact to the global economy, which is actually something that is uh, good for, for inflation. But we're looking at considerable economic slowdown here. I'm wondering what your take is on this. Is it going to last months? Is it going to take us well into next year, beyond? Yes, um, so if you look at the... Uh, China, the, the core prices, uh, you know, the headline uh, inflation, we know that is driven by pork prices, as you mentioned. Um, but actually, if the underlying prices shows that domestic demand is still pretty weak. Uh, we all know that the uh, previous lockdowns and the very strict restriction, uh, restrictions are still having a negative impact on the economy, on consumer confidence, and the job market is not particularly great. And that would weigh on demand. And that's why uh, a lot of people are expecting that China probably couldn't meet its uh, GDP target this year. Um, and I mean, if uh, restrictions are gradually being relaxed, uh, if consumer confidence pick up, if the property sector um, gets a bit better, then probably growth trajectory could improve later into, into the year, especially we are starting to see some more stimulus coming through from the Chinese government. Now, we, we, we know, we've been hearing from, from our other correspondents that it's a global issue now, but how worried should we be about the rising food prices in China? Yeah, so, so um, the rise in food prices in China is a bit more localized. Uh, as we see from the data, you mentioned that pork prices were rising by 20 percent. Uh, and that is basically because of tight supply and the demand is still very strong. So that is a, a pretty domestic problem uh, relevant to pork. Uh, which is a very you know, Chinese staple for food consumption. Uh, but, but generally speaking, global food prices is a concern. Uh, we have seen peak food prices right after the war in Ukraine started. Uh, although food prices have actually come down from that peak, it is still very elevated. We're still talking about double-digit uh, growth in the food prices globally. So uh, the poorest household in uh, developing economies are going to suffer more because their consumption basket can just consist more of food. So that, that is problematic for emerging markets. Janet, thank you very much. Janet Mu from um, Brewing Dolphin. Thank you.